We're in the National Gallery in Washington, D.C., and we're looking at a really beautiful painting. It's Raphael's Alba Madonna from 15, about 1510. Raphael was famous for his incredibly beautiful and sweet Madonnas, and this is a perfect example of that. And it's a really unusual painting. You have the Virgin Mary, you have the young Christ on her lap, but if you look at the way that her arms are extended and the way that her lap is extended, it's almost as if she's really a kind of a throne for him mm-hmm. to sit on. Mm-hmm. But we have essentially the same cast of characters that we have in Leonardo's Virgin of the Rocks. So the third figure. St. John the Baptist. And, then and how can the you only tell? thing that's missing here that was in the Leonardo was the figure of an angel. And of course we've entered into the high renaissance now right. in, in a way that, in a sense, the angel has really disappeared. Those sort of overt um, yes, expressions. Spiritual figures. That's right. right. Those are overt expressions right. of the divine. That's are kind of, right. In a sense they've been replaced by nature itself. Raphael definitely has looked at Leonardo and his Madonna has her arm around St. John much the same way that she does in the Virgin of the Rock. Yes. And we have those lingering Well, after faint, all, she's his aunt. That's true. Yes. We have those lingering faint halos. The faintest trace right. still. Right, and they're going to be gone. Actually, I, I suppose with Leonardo they'd already been gone, but Raphael's still holding on to them a bit. But you're right, the, there's a kind of overwhelming humanism here a humanism that's transcended by the ideal beauty of the figure. So he's really expressing divinity through this ideal beauty then. Yes, and also I think through the incredibly fluid and graceful way that the figures move. Almost like dance. It it is almost like dance. It's incredibly complicated. Mary looks down past St. John, almost looking into the future, her arm around him, her left hand holding a, a page in the Bible. The Christ child twisting As he's his turning, body. He's sort of accepting the cross, yes. right? A um, kind of acceptance of his destiny, uh, of his sacrifice. Right. Mary has her right leg tucked under her left leg coming up. There's a sense that she's almost caught moving here. There's there's nothing static about any part of this image. And even though there's this lack of the static, there's also a kind of, I guess because of their scale within the landscape. They're kind very of mon- monumental. Yeah, this is monumentality, this sort of sense of seriousness here. Absolutely. And they are in this beautiful natural environment, and yet we get a sense of a kind of classicism. I mean, he's, you know, Raphael is in Rome, yes. and he's really looking at the, cla- the classical. And, yes. and the classical. And yeah. he's concurrently working on... This is quite a moment, the isn't Sanza it? The Stanza della Signatura, and the so, School of Athens included there. And at the same time, Michelangelo, of course, is painting the Sistine Chapel ceiling. Right at this moment. So there's this incredible interest in monumental, serious figures and monumental commissions and major masterpieces. But this is a, this is a, a fairly modest painting mm-hmm. in, in its scale. It's about three feet. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this is just something he does on the side. <laughs> Amazing, <laughs> isn't it? What a man. Going back to the, to the idea of Leonardo. Yes, there's there, a lot of Leonardo. There, I mean, if you look at the delicate and careful renderings, for instance, of the, of the, the flowers. Yeah, these botanical specimens, very much like in the Madonna of the Rocks. Very much like the Madonna of the Rocks. Hard to know if Raphael himself is looking at Northern Renaissance.